Hi and welcome to the first in our videos looking at the Vexcode VR software. Um, Vexcode VR is our virtual programming uh, environment, virtual robotics uh, programming environment. It's very very similar in look and feel to um, Vexcode IQ blocks and Vexcode V5 blocks which are the scratch based programming languages block-based programming languages for our physical um, VexIQ and VexV5 robot platforms. Uh, the difference with Vexcode VR is that you don't need a physical robot. The robot is a, runs in a virtual environment. The software runs in a browser window, which means you can use it on uh, PC, Mac, Chromebook, tablets, um, any device really with a browser and, a, and an internet connection. Um, so very accessible, very easy to use, and uh, like I say, you don't need physical robot to do it, um, which means uh, it can be used uh, at home much easier or by larger numbers in a in a class environment. Um, so I'm going to make a few videos uh, to walk you through uh, a lot of the functions and how to get the most out of Vexcode VR. This first video is just purely looking at the environment itself, um, uh, the layout, uh, and sort of how to navigate your way around it. Um, so the first thing is uh, Vexco VR um, is, uh, like I say, it's browser based. So if you navigate to vr.vex.com, uh, that's where you will find uh, the software. Um, and once you're in, this is the uh, the screen that you'll be greeted with. And so it's a standard sort of scratch block based language layout. Um, so uh, this is the main area here where we'll be building the code in the center of the screen. We've got the toolbox to the left hand side. So all of the uh, all the commands which we'll come back and have a look at in a bit and then um, our uh, menus uh, along the top here uh, so just working along that first from the left hand side you can change the language so it's got English, Spanish uh, and Chinese options standard file menu integrated tutorials um, for some of the uh, the basics and they will, there'll be more and more added uh, to those as time goes on uh, activities so this takes you um, to the education.vex.com site um, and to the VR activities and this is one of the sort of the strongest uh, tools within VR this allows students um, to uh, to pick up the activities and work through so if we just scroll down here you can see we've got a whole bunch of different activities and if I just click on one of those it'll take me into a document um, so this is the uh, the disk transport uh, playground, which we'll look at in more detail in a minute. Um, and so this gives you three levels of challenges to approach, um, some helpful hints and some of the blocks, sort of uh, some discussion about some of the blocks that you might need to use um, when completing those tasks. Um, so there are lots and lots of activities in there. Again, more being added to that all the time. Uh, and you can always just get straight to that by clicking the activities link within Vexcode VR. Uh, this central box here allows you to name your project. So when you need to save and, and download, which we'll again we'll look at in a moment, this is where we will be naming our project. Um, then this button here, the playground, this is uh, one of the most important ones. If I click on that, it'll bring up the virtual environment. Um, so this has two possible sizes. This button here allows you to shrink and expand it depending on how much um, screen space you have available to you. Um, the hide button here is useful um, because if you're building a lot of code and you need to, to see the code that's going on behind, the hide button minimizes um, the uh, playground just into this little bar here to give you a bit more uh, space to work on your code. The difference between doing that, hiding and showing, and closing it is that it doesn't need to reload each time. So if I close it um, and then click on the playground, it's reloading the playground there. Whereas this just is minimizing it, so I've got a bit more space. Um, the drop down here allows me to select which playground I want to uh, to work in. So we'll look at a few of those in a moment. Um, there's a few different playgrounds there, so different environments in which to, to program the robot. Again, another link to the activities page here. Um, and then this one to close uh, the, uh, the playground window down. Um, this part here. We've got some um, information about uh, the robot and the sensors and what they can see. So the heading, that's the direction uh, that the robot is facing with nought degrees being straight up the, the field, sort of north if you like. Um, rotation, um, so again, the rotational value of the, uh, the robot, uh, that's a cumulative value. Again, we'll look at that in a moment. 
Um, then we have various sensors on the robot. So um, we have what's called the front eye, which can detect um, distance and color. Uh, a down eye, again, can detect whether there's an object there um, and uh, what color the object is. The location is the XY location of the robot in the field. So at the moment, we're minus 900 uh, and minus 900. Um, so the center is zero, zero. The center of the field is zero, zero. And we'll look at location again later on. Um, and some more statistics there, so uh, the, the distance the robot's travelled, whether the bumper switches on the front are pressed and so on. Um, now moving down here, we have uh, a play button, so that's that play button is the same as running your code, which is uh, the button up here, which we'll get to. This is the reset button, um, so if your robot has uh, finished executing its code, if you want to reset the playground to its original configuration, that's what you press there. This one um, is to hide or show uh, these um, uh, these bits of information at the top of the, the playground screen. And then we have two different camera views, top down, which is the default one, or the sort of uh, three-dimensional view there. So if I uh, flick to three-dimensional, you can actually click and drag with your mouse to move around the three-dimensional view. And if you've got a scroll wheel, you can use that to zoom in and out as well. So this is the Vexcode VR default robot. Uh, it's got two bumper switches on the uh, on the front this is the front eye sensor um, which detects color and sort of like a distance sensor as well and um, if i move down ever so slightly there's another one on the bottom there looking down so we can see uh, objects underneath the robot and um, we also have a, a pen there if you can just about see that there's a pen in the top of the robot that we can lower and raise um, for doing some drawing uh, as well which is really cool um, so the different playgrounds that we have uh, available to us so the grid map here so this is just a um, a, uh, a grid of squares um, I think that's on a 200 millimeter each square being a 200 millimeter square um, so you can just use that for some sort of basic navigation tasks we have what's called the art canvas uh, so the art canvas are just again a big blank canvas which is great for using the uh, the pen tool on the disk maze so the disk maze if I go to the three-dimensional view it'll be a bit clearer um, so the disk maze here has uh, a number of different colored disks located, so they're either green, blue, or red. And if you look at the, um, the sort of top-down view, you can see that uh, there's a maze to be had here. So if we were to hit a, a green um, disk and turn right, that would take us to a blue. So a blue would turn left, another blue would be left. And so here there's another right. Uh, a left and a right and that would take us to the red which could be the finish so you, there's a nice programming challenge uh, in the disk maze there wall maze more conventional maze um, so uh, a, um, a maze with various uh, lettered endpoints that you can get to so uh, a b c and d uh, some numerical values that you could head to as well uh, and then a sort of a, a finish um, and say so a maze to, to solve there with your code uh, the number grid map, so very much like the first um, playground with the grid, but this one has uh, numbers 1 to 100 on it, um, so you can make some really nice programming challenges about how, to, how do you drive directly to a particular number or something like that. Disk transport, this is a cool one. Um, so it's kind of got this, uh, this castle with a castle wall around it, uh, and these coloured disks in here, and the coloured disks... Um, are similar to what is uh, in the new uh, VEX GO system and um, there's a, a magnet, uh, uh, sort of electromagnet on the bottom of the robot that can pick up these coloured discs and so also on this map, uh, on this playground we have these blue, red and green areas where we could maybe deposit the, the discs so you've got the different coloured discs and maybe place them in the, in the correct areas and finally the Castle Crasher um, this is a bit of a fun uh, fun playground. So it's got uh, these uh, castle pieces in it. Those aren't fixed to the ground and you can sort of just smash through them. And the idea with this one is to knock them off the edge of the, uh, off the edge of the playground, but without losing the robot off the edge. So loads and loads of different types of challenges there in the playgrounds. Um, and that window can just stay uh, can stay there whilst we're starting to build our code. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, the toolbox. So the toolbox is broken down into categories, much like you'd find in, in any um, block-based language. So we have drivetrain. There are um, main sort of movement controls. 
uh, magnet. So I mentioned we have the an electromagnet on the bottom that can be set to boost or drop so that collect or, or drop an item and um, we have the looks uh, which gives us the um, the pen tool so we can raise the pen uh, up or down um, and uh, you can change the color uh, of the pen that can be either black red green or blue um, control is our uh, main sort of program control features so uh, loops uh, and logic, so if then else logic and that kind of thing. Sensors, so we've got um, various sensors on the robot. Um, just timing, so sort of a, a timer built into the brain if we want to time the, the amount of time that part of the program has been running for, something like that. Uh, Drivetrain sensing, so we can see if the drive is moving or not um, and uh, what the heading is in degrees or the, uh, the rotation of the robot in degrees, whether the left or right bumper switches are pressed, um, whether the distance sensor can see an object, um, and also we can get the actual distance from that object uh, in millimetres as well. And then is the front eye near an object uh, and what colour is it detecting? And the same, we can drop these down and look at the down eye as well. Um, and so is it detecting an object and what colour is it? Um, and then we've got our X and Y location on the actual field. Um, and so uh, here we go, we've got the, the X and Y location shown here. And you can actually get that back into your code as well, which is really useful for navigation. Operators, so all our mathematical functions and things like that. Variables. Um, so within the variables, uh, we can um, create a, uh, a variable um, for a numeric, storing a numeric value. So we just give that um, a name. So we might... I don't know, have something called like uh, distance traveled or something like that. So you just create yourself a, a variable name there. And we also have uh, the option to create a Boolean variable um, or a list or a 2D list. So a list uh, at the moment gives you a, um, a, a single dimensional array, so a single column array uh, with up to 10 values stored in it um, or a 2D list. Um, your two-dimensional array that can be up to a 10 by 10 uh, array, so storing 100 values in total in that um, in that array. Uh, and the final thing there is the my blocks. So my blocks um, gives you the ability to create functions or sort of subroutines. So if we create a my block, um, then uh, we could uh, we'll just call this one test for the sake of creating a block. Um, but you can see here. Um, this gives me a uh, an area to define it, and I'll create a video that talks a lot more about my blocks um, because it's a really really cool function. But then we can call uh, whatever is attached to this at any point um, in our program, uh, and we'll we'll do a whole session on my blocks because it's a it's such a, a powerful part of the uh, of the programming language. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the simplest way to uh, create a program and how we run it and also how we save it and download it um, so firstly uh, I'm just going to to make the robot uh, drive forwards um, and smash through this first piece of castle so the uh, if I go to my drivetrain blocks uh, I'm going to say drive forwards and uh, let's say we'll drive forward for 1500 millimeters um, so that's my simple program and if I want to run it I can either just press the play button here or the one that's inside the playground they both do the same thing um, and as I play it there we go my robot starts to move and hey look I've managed to push a little bit off the edge of the uh, off the edge of the playground there um, now if I just reset that click the reset button um, what to uh, a really useful function of the way that VexCode VR works is it shows you in the code here what is being executed uh, at that time. So if I play that again, you'll see that the drive forwards is flashing at the moment because that, whilst it's driving forwards the 1500 millimeters, that is the piece of code that is being executed. Um, if I just quickly expand upon that a little bit, so let's say at the end of that we want to turn right 90 degrees. Um, so I hit play. Uh, we're driving forwards and see this is flashing to show this is being executed and when I've achieved the 1500 millimeters uh, then it turns right 90 degrees and then that was flashing whilst I was uh, turning right 90 degrees so it's showing you what is being executed um, at any point in time um, 
just to look at some of the uh, sensor data here whilst that's moving. So if I just again bring this into the three dimensional view. Um, so you can see that there is currently an object in front of the robot. Um, and if I bring up my uh, my uh, sensor data there, you can see that's the distance sensor is reading that it's 557 millimeters from this object. Uh, so that's how far we are from it at the moment. Um, and as I start to drive forwards, you'll see this number reducing. Um, and also you'll see the, uh, the XY coordinates changing. Um, so it'll actually be the Y at the moment we're at minus. Uh, 800 but as we drive towards the center of the field that will go closer to zero and then once we get to the center of the field it will then start to get to a positive value so if I just run that you'll see uh, so I'm getting closer to the object and this value is going down my y value is now increasing as I'm moving up the y axes uh, of the field um, so there you go you can see sort of live data from your uh, from your sensors and also the um, sort of uh, positional data there uh, last thing I want to look at is how you save and share a program. So you can give a program a name by clicking here. Uh, and um, let's say this is for the Castle Crasher map, so we'll call it uh, Castle Crasher 1. So that's now given it a name, but it hasn't saved it yet. If I want to save it, I go to File and Save to your device. And by default, so you can see Google Chrome here has just downloaded it and that will land in your downloads folder. Um, that, so that will automatically just drop into your downloads folder as a .vr blocks um, file. Uh, and if you want to open, uh, so that gives you the opportunity to share that via um, your sort of um, virtual classroom environment or um, email it or whatever uh, to, to share your programs. And if I wanted to open a program, just the same as you would from any uh, any other piece of software. Go to File, Load from your device, um, and then it will just bring up a, a file explorer. You find your VR Blocks program and, and open it. It will be slightly different on a tablet. Tablets may save things in, in slightly different locations, um, but the, the basic concept of how you save and open a file will be exactly the same. Um, the last thing I want to look at is the uh, the Help function. So this little question mark here. If you click on that, uh, I'm going to just need to move my playground out of the way. Um, so bring up the help function. If you then click on any block, either within your code or in the uh, in the toolbox, then it will just give you a bit of information about that. So for example, if I click on my drive forward, it tells you uh, what the drive forward block does and how you can use it. Um, so for some of the sensing um, information there this can be really useful say uh, what is drive heading and and how can i use it so the help function there is really really useful just click on any block um, and it will give you a bit of information about how to use that that block within your code uh, so that's just a basic overview of the um the vexcode vr environment the next video uh, will look at how to use the drivetrain commands and so how to do basic navigation on the field